welcome to another episode of Jay Lono's Garage. Today the car is a 1969 Ford Mustang Boss 429. It doesn't get much rarer than this as far as Mustangs go. This is one of those uh, misunderstood cars. Uh, the most powerful engine Ford has ever built up to that time period, I guess, if you didn't count the camera, which was not really put in cars. And this one is 100% restored. I don't think it gets much better than this. You know, I like the guys who specialize in sort of one-maker cars. And Marcus Angel, he's the uh, Boss 429 guy. Come on in. You restored this car, correct? Yeah. Now, this okay. is not my car. This is restored for a customer of yours, right? Right. Customer, okay. Yeah. And you're on the judging committee and all that kind of stuff, right? Yeah, I do quite a bit. Um, I do uh, judging for the, I'm the national head judge for the Shelby Club of America, Mustang Club of America as right. well. I do some writing for Mustang Monthly, and I have a restoration shop in okay. Scottsdale. What turned you on to Mustang? What made that the car for you? Well, I think, um, you know, although I wasn't around in 1969, in high school, I'd have these cars. People were, you know, kids and ourselves were fixing them up. We didn't right. know them or appreciate them like we do today. But I just fell in love with the, the lines, the, uh, the classic lines of the Mustang, and specifically, you know, what I really like is these 69 and 70 Mustangs. Okay. Now, the Boss 429, this is one of the most misunderstood engines. Yeah. I, I think. Underappreciated by some. Yeah overly appreciated by others around. But more people just kind of wrote it off because, well, the Hemi and the, and the big Chevy had 427 horsepower, whatever. Right. Uh, this was rated at 375. 375. But it was really much more than that, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, it was detuned for the street, right? So they said 375, they had, you know, um, issues with insurance, and, you know, it was get, starting to get into that era where they were under rating these right so and plus smog and stuff was coming smog, in as well yeah. so yeah. you had to lean out the carburetors beyond what they were meant to do sure okay yeah and this one you've put back to a hundred percent stock it even has the smog pump which is very yes. risky. did yeah. that mean it was a california car no the california car started in 1970 so they had a special package for emissions in 1970 okay but all of these cars with basically with the Holley carburetors, the Boss 302s, the Cobra Jets, and these Boss 429s had this uh, thermactor system with the right. smog pump. Well, let's show people, since the engine is really the focal point of this whole car, let, let's get right to that. Open the hood. Okay. Yeah, I open up here. And this. Okay. And this is what everybody always looks at, right? You go to a car show, you open this up, and like with most cars, right, it's always nice to stand around. But when you look at the size of the motor, right, it's enormous for a Mustang. And this was called a semi-hemi. Is that fair to say? It wasn't a true hemi head. Right. But it was... It was along, yeah, and they called it a semi-hemi. They also called it the shotgun motor. Right. Uh, they had a couple different names for it. Uh, I call it the shotgun motor. I see a lot of literature from the uh, 60s. Uh, and even the Ford promotional stuff that called it. And that. these were not even built by Ford, right? Now, as I remember, there was a company called Carcraft. Yeah. And what? They would pull a Mustang off the line and and modify it to take this big motor. Yeah, something like that. So they had uh, in Dearborn, Michigan, uh, Carcraft was kind of like um, I know how you like the Mercedes. It's like the AMG. The performance arm. Right. Of Ford. Okay. It was like this little kind of, if you want to say, secret shop. But it was a shop that did a lot of the modifications, did kind a lot like of racing Holman stuff. Kind of like Holman and Moody, that yeah, kind of thing. Okay, yeah, yeah, exactly. So they were contracted to build these Boss 429 Mustangs, both the 69 and the 70 model. Ford was getting their butt kicked by the Hemi Chargers yeah. and all that kind of stuff with the big 426 Hemi. This, yeah. this was an engine built for NASCAR, correct? Correct. Originally, this motor was supposed to go into the Galaxy. That was the whole design. That was the idea to put this. All they wanted to do was homologate this and get this in NASCAR. They had to sell 500 units. Right. But at the last minute, um, the new guy from, that came over from GM, Bunky Knudsen, he said, you know, why are we doing this? We, wanna, we have this Mustang. And the engineer said it doesn't fit in there. He's like, make it fit. Find a way to make it fit. Right. So this is really a shoehorn job. Isn't yeah, yeah. The, the, the shock towers were moved out. Yeah, these are out further. Yeah, that's okay. the only way to get this in. A regular Mustang, there's no way that this would fit in here. And it couldn't have handled very well with this huge lump hanging over the front <laughs> axle like this, right? I mean, well, it, it was uh, not the best handling Mustang. Maybe. I, I, we could say that, yeah. Well, put it this way. A... <clears throat> 289 on a road course would probably take this, wouldn't yes, it? Yes, that's, yeah. that's fair to say that, yeah. sure. Yeah. Because you're just yeah. plowing, you yeah. go into those turns, oh, you, your weight is probably, what, 60, 40? 
it's uh, it's a little bit less than that, 55, 58. something like that. Yeah, okay. Yeah. But yeah. they did, you know, they knew this. They put on here what they call the competition suspension on here, you know, the heavier duty sway bar in the back. And they put a sway bar in, um, in the back and in the front on these cars. Yeah. Yeah. But it's a bit like Dolly Parton doing gymnastics. Certain parts <laughs> override the other parts. Yeah, you yeah, just, sure. Once everything sure. starts moving, <laughs> inertia <laughs> takes over. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. That's basically what. But that's not to say it's not a great motor. That's a good way to put it, I yeah, think. Yeah, yeah. Do you even have the overspray here? Is that correct? Is yeah. That why that, yeah. Yeah, on the, on the smog pump there. I, I mean, what I would do here with the cars that I bring in is, the idea is this is day one. So day one means the way that the, the customer picked it up from the dealership. Mm -hmm. All the chalk marks that you see on here, all, all right. the stickers, the patina. You know, you want to be careful not to make everything the sh same shade of black. Um, now, why green? I don't see any green in here. So what is the green overspray from? Well, we see that on original uh, pieces. You have that on here on the distributor as right. well. But what I do is I try to copy as uh, low mileage cars as possible. Right. So when we see but a really... But what was green that when they were spraying green here? I mean, wh wh why <laughs> green paint in here? I don't understand if there was a bit of red on here because it's over. No, no, it's, uh, well, it's part of the assembly of that, uh, of that smog pump. The okay. green is with that. And the interesting thing with these smog pumps, you know, everybody wants to be, you know, this is a Ford. Those were actually made by GM. Okay. Yeah. And the fascinating thing was, the first thing you did when you bought one of these cars, was take this stupid smog pump off and throw it away. Right. So to try and find one of these must have been a lot of work, I imagine. Yeah, yeah they're out there. Um, yeah. You know, but to put it back and, uh, I mean, there's the whole system that goes with it. Uh, but that's the true way to do that on these cars. Um, it's the way they were delivered. A disc brakes in front? Disc brakes was standard on this car. Right. The but, base model must only in the front. Only in the front. Right. The base model Mustang, still in 1969, was a drum car. What they did is they added an oil cooler on okay. all these cars. So oh, you'll well, see here this yeah. here. Yeah. So they would route the oil through here. It had a 391 geared rear end. Oh, so okay. they were kind of worried about that. You know, and this, this had to be uh, in a lot of different environments, right? Hot, cold, but that sure. was added on. All the Boss 429s had that oil cooler. Right? And what was the compression ratio on these? Do you remember? A 10 and a half to one. A 10 and a half. So that's not... It's not 11 and a half, it's not 12, so it could run on yeah. 91 octane sure. fuel. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Okay, yeah, because these, although are expensive, they're not in the million dollar range like some of the Hemi cars and some right. other cars like that. Yeah. Even though it's a four speed and it's a desirable body, it's, it's just, yeah. it's one of those cars that just was sort of misunderstood from the day it yeah. came out. They, Ford kind of hemmed and hawed and was well, not yeah. really, but, you know, they didn't, spread the rumor, like the rumor with the 426 Hemi was it was closer to 500 or 550 horse, you know, yeah. but they said it was this. Ford said, no, this is 370, well, it's 375. Yeah. So if you're a guy who's buying your cars by the horsepower numbers, it didn't seem as powerful as the Challenger or some of the other things were out at the time. Yeah. And the transmission is what? Just your basic uh, Ford four speed? It's a top loader transmission. Okay. It's the one that was in the Galaxy in the big cars. Yeah, they had variations of it, but the top loader, there's no automatic on these cars that were made because they didn't feel that the automatic could handle right. the torque on these cars. The torque was around 450 foot-pounds okay. on here. They sold these cars on performance, right? The right. big thing in the 60s, and especially with Ford, 69, 70, they wanted to uh, race these cars and they figured they enticed buyers to come in. Yeah. So they see all these different types of racing out there. And people say, hey, I want to buy a car that I can race on the weekend and then go to work and during the week. Right, right. So a lot of buyers were brought in by the performance that they were doing, which is a little different than what we see today. And the other odd thing is when you bought some of the Chryslers or some of the other cars and you got the 426 Hemi, you didn't get the power booster and power steering, whereas yeah. this has all that, doesn't it? The power brakes and power steering are standard on this car. Could you get air conditioning on a 429? No, no, no room no. in there. Is no, it? there's no room. I mean, and you see they had to move the battery in the back as well. Yeah. I mean, this thing is really uh, crammed in there. And what did this cost new? New, it costed $5,000. Okay. Right. So, so that it doesn't sound like a lot, 5000 but keeping in mind that the base you know, uh, the comparable Mustang, the 428, was around 3000 this, right. this package was a $2,000 add-on. Sure, that was huge. Yeah, so this car sat on the lot, this particular one, for six months before it sold. Yeah, and that was Corvette Stingray money, wasn't it? 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, the yeah. Corvette was under $5,000, and you could have gotten a, a 427, 435 horsepower car right. with that, and it was probably a better balanced package yeah. overall. Uh, yeah, that's not just, it's one of those cars that is, is quickly appreciating. It just hasn't appreciated as much as others. You really have to understand yeah. what, what you're getting here. Yeah, and I think the market is, you know, there's, it's done quite a bit in the market in the last 10 years. Yeah, yeah. As people learn about them. Um, you know, in a car like this that has the original drivetrain in it, it's, it's a hard thing to find. A lot of these motors got blown up and replaced. Sure, sure. I remember when we were kids and the 429 looked too bigger than the uh, 427. You know, it just, yeah. everybody was bigger. And then the 440 came after the Chrysler, you know, all that kind of stuff. But, yeah, it's a great looking motor. I mean, it reminds me of a Harley knucklehead the way the... Yeah. The valve covers protrude like that. Cool. Okay, let, let's shut the hood again and take a little look around the car. You got five lug wheels. Those are, are those the standard Ford wheels at the time? Uh, these, oh. are the, these are the Magnum 500 wheels that they put on. And those are polyglass. Yep, Goodyear those polyglass. Those are like hilarious tires. I mean, they just, <laughs> they melt in like two seconds, don't they? You just, they're smoke makers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 You look at the Mopars, right, and some of these, they're loud, they're very, you can see it from half a mile away, right, right? right? This is very understated. You have a hood scoop on here, just the stenciled Boss 429. Actually, I thought this looks almost contemporary, because now the, the idea is not to have a big chrome thing yeah. that sticks out. It was just to paint some graphic. And I actually think, I, I imagine them young people probably think, oh, you, you added that because <laughs> it looks sort of modern but that's yeah. the way it was done wasn't it yeah, yeah that's the way it was Very done cool. it was yeah. uh i mean styling wise you have that you had the front spoiler um that was added on there and if you took this off it could be a 302. Yeah, I mean, put that off to change the hood on there yeah yeah it's it's very understated and I that's think. a functional hood scoop yeah it's functional we have controls inside where we can you can open and close it yeah okay so, yeah. so as a rain you would close it obviously yeah 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 okay but I like the wheel. It's nice to see a pre-airbag wheel with a normal kind of, you know. Well, the wheel and these, uh, they're called Rimblow steering wheels, right? So oh, the, yeah, the you way squeeze it, huh? You, <laughs> you do that around the edge. And, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, but every time you get in the car, you, yeah. you just you Well, if, if you don't know when you're steering, you'll, you'll yeah. hit that. It's the only car of that era, Mustang-wise, that has four headlights. Oh, right, right. So you don't see that in the early cars right. or later than then. Yeah. Uh, they rolled the fenders on these cars, so where the wheels go, right here, Jay, see all this? Yeah. Is rolled in. That Carcraft was, did that? Carcraft did that, and then these came from the assembly line. They're rolled here as well. Okay. Did Carcraft paint them as well, or was that... Yeah, it was a, it was a finished... Oh, so they just sent a body in white, no motor. Yeah. And, okay. Yeah. All right. It's basically, the way you see it here, this is the original interior on this car. Right. Uh, the steering wheel was restored. Those crack pretty typically. And it's got the little place to hold the seat belts. Yeah, the seat belts. So if yeah. you didn't want to use it, it wasn't in your way. <laughs> yeah, you could just tuck it down you there. You could just tuck it down Forget there. Forget about it. bother with it. Yeah. yeah. Let's take a look inside the trunk. Okay. I brought something in the trunk for you to take oh, a look cool. at as well. And this has an actual trunk. You can put stuff in here. It, wow, look at the size of that battery. That's enormous. Yeah. So the batteries, they all were trunk-mounted batteries on these cars, and because of the size of the 15-inch wheels, they had to put these space savers in Oh, the in space savers spare. But I brought, what I wanted to show um, as well was, this was the literature, you know, not every Ford dealer was a performance dealer. Right, right. So this here is the, considered the holy grail of uh, literature for the 6970 Mustangs, for the Cobra Jets, for the Boss 429s. I remember in my neighborhood, it was Tasca Ford in Rhode Island. Tasca was huge. Tasca, they were the huge performance guys. Right, right. Uh, I used to work at a place called Wilmington Ford. Yeah. Uh, we, yeah, so it's really funny. I remember those days. Yeah, and I mean, this just shows, it gives the dealers help. They, uh, Ford wanted to show them how to sell these cars, right. how to position themselves against the, uh, the Mopars of the day. Um, it helps them with uh, different things they can buy for their dealership. So, you know, you'll see something, uh, a lot of them had the performance corner, and, right. and then they'll have all kinds of uh, parts that they sell there, and they'll have a couple cars. But it was called... This, Total performance. In the Total 60s. performance. That's yeah. what it was. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's so funny. You brought some magazines, and I remember buying these magazines when I was a kid. Yeah. I have this issue of Hot Rod. eBay. Yeah. They get all this stuff on eBay now. There you go. Twenty nine. Can we take it out for a little spin? Is that possible? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. 
So this car had what, 49,000 miles on it? It's the original mileage on it when you got it? Yeah, it's the original miles. Uh, it was one owner that originally bought it in uh, 1969 before wow. uh, Eric bought it. And he documented everything, so that was really appealing on the car. It's like a thousand miles a year, huh? Yeah, it's not a lot, you know, when you think about how no. old these cars are. And, you know, it's much better to be driven. I remember there was that sale in Nebraska where people buying 63 Chevy with two miles on it. Yeah. Well, I think you still got to pull the piston. You got to do everything to it. Yeah, you But can't something drive that's it. been started once a month, you know. That's got some power, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. But the power steering and the power brake can make it really, really easy to drive. Oh, look at that. There little, you go. A little chirp in third. But it's, it's fun to see the cars as they were produced. You know, it's funny when you read the road test, cars have always been pretty fast. They can always make them powerful. They just couldn't make them stop and go around corners yet. That yeah. was the real, the real test. So you had these outrageous cars like you know, the Hemi Cuda and this other stuff in a straight line, crazy, until you came to a turn, uh-oh. And that was the end, of, end yeah. of that game. Boy, this drives really nice. This is the first Boss 2429 I've driven, so I sort of have a newfound respect. I thought it'd be, you put your foot in, it'd be bucking, and, and you know, you hear the valves, tick 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 you know. Well, you gotta tune it just right. I mean, that, yeah. there is a, a bit of work that goes into this. Um, I had to take the carburetor completely apart again and machine everything uh, to get it just true. But it's funny, you know, the, the carburetor on here, it's a 735. It's smaller than the Boss 302 carburetor. Right? Yeah. You put a big carburetor on here, you get rid of the smog, you open up the exhaust. It's a completely different car. Yeah, yeah. You could take a road trip in this thing. Sure. If you could afford the gas. It's like the strongest old guy in the world, you know? A little dated, but it gets, if it punches you in the face, yeah. you're gonna get punched in the face. <laughs> ah! Well, the temperature's pretty hot today, but it's running dead center, nice and cool. Yeah, it's built to run. I mean, it's a beautiful show car, but you yeah. can take this out and enjoy it. Now, the owner's gonna meet us at the garage. What's his name? Eric. Eric, does he know we're out driving around in his car? Uh, he might have missed that, actually. Well, he will when he sees we, this. Yeah, we, uh, we told him there was some food and drink, and then uh, we took off. Yeah. He doesn't look too worried. Eric, how you doing? Eric, come on over here. This is Eric. He's the owner of this car. Okay. Hey, how many miles have you put on this thing? Oh, maybe 200. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, it runs beautifully. Well, that's great. He did a one of Mark's did a great, great job. It's a very impressive car. Very tight. Nothing overheats. Because I really expected the engine to be, you know, a lot of valve clatter and, and, and detonation and whatnot just because of crappy gas and all that. But, boy, it runs really nice. It's... It, this is probably better than new, I think, isn't it? Yeah. I would think so, yeah. Yeah, you got a good one on your hands here. I'll give you twice what it costs new. Done. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the way to do it. See you guys next week. Check out this restoration shop. Very good.